what I've got here today, you can't see it from there, is a piece of snake wood. And you can see how the grain appears just as like a snakeskin effect. Hugely expensive, hugely expensive. This piece here, probably eight quid's worth, I'd say. I've cut the little, I've cut an inch off the end a bit. Ten pound forty for the five inch long, three quarters of an inch square piece. So it's not the cheapest wood you use. But this wood is absolutely stunning. It's when, when I've, I've made a couple of pens with it. Uh, sold one set of them cheap last year to a guy in India. Um, pen and pencil set made out of snake wood. Wasn't my best work, but so what I've got is I've got the two bushes either end which are a guide to where the pen top and the pen barrel or nib end will go otherwise you'd, it'd be a guessing game trying to decide how thick or thin to take it what happens between that point there and that point there is totally up to me. If I wanted to make it a big fat barrelly pen, I could make it a big fat barrelly pen, or I could make it a long, slim, sleek pen. It's actually the Taylor Murfield Athena, which is their click pen. They've recently uh, brought out a, a pencil, propelling pencil to go with it. So I've got another piece of this gluing over there. Um, it appeared when I when I cut the end off the other piece, it it appeared to have a, a split going through half, halfway through it. So um, I've just wrapped it in a, a bit of black cling film with some crystal resin, and then I bound it up with tape to try and push the resin under pressure into the into the crack. But it shouldn't be shouldn't be an issue. Um, so I'm going to turn this one down now. Nice sharp chisel. It's not bad, but I might give it another quick run. Just go and chill this down. Mm. Still a bit warm. Right. So, here we go. Right, so as you can see, it took no time at all to get it down to a barrel. You can see I've probably got about 5 mil on each end to bring down. So I'll start carving that down now.
And there we go. That's probably as far as I want to take it because I'm a coward. I could take it a lot thinner if I wanted, but I'd, I'd rather get the sandpaper on it. So we'll start with a sheet of 80. Should be more than enough. Grab me brew. Oh, I love cup of tea. My wife obviously thinks I'm getting fat because she's not putting any sugar in it. So I'm just having a look around, make sure there's no big scratches in it, big gouges in it, anything like that. Well, I've, I've hardly used that 80 on it, so I'll keep that back because I'm tight. Last time I pulled a tenner out of my wallet, the queen put on a pair of sunglasses. You can really see that grain coming out there. Bring it a bit closer. And it's a lovely, you don't get it in this picture, but it's a lovely reddish brown at the moment. Um, I've got two or three mil left here. Um, I'm going to venture onto a 240. I'm not sure if it's a, a bit too early to venture onto a 240, but I'm going to do it anyway. It doesn't matter if you don't judge this right. All it means is it's going to take you, well, twice as long, effectively, because this is a 240. That's a 120, so it'll take you twice as long to get, as, get anywhere with a 240. <laughs>
I'm down to probably less than a mil on either end. Um, if that. And I've used, I mean, there's no abrasion left on that side really, so. I'll use the other side. So you can start to see it's starting to darken up a little bit now and become more red. And I can't see any scratches, any gouges on it. I don't, for some unknown reason, I don't seem to have a 300 grit sandpaper. And I don't know why. So I might just have to jump onto 400. Be a bit of a pain. Because it'll, um, yeah, so I'll just jump straight onto the 400 now. Hopefully that'll be all right. It'll just take twice as long. And I've got yeah, just little tiny bits there now to take off. I might have eventually end up using two of these sheets.
better. So we're almost there now, so I'll get another sheet of two, two 400 on it. Two, two 400. Fold it the right way round, otherwise I'll be here all day. Rough side out. I mean, one of the things I like about snakewood is not just the, the finish it gives you and the, the, the pattern, but it's got such a lovely smell as well. Kind of exotic, not erotic, exotic. So, 
Let's have a bit of a closer look. This is after 400. There's virtually no difference between the ends of the bushes and the beginning of the wood now. It's feel a little, um, feel a little ridge there. Um, that side's not got much of a snaky pattern on it, so I'll make that the back of the pen. And there's the snake wood effect. Beautiful. So I'm going to go on to a 600 grit sandpaper now. It's not going to take much off, but it's going to start to make it sparkle. So that was four, six. There's still a bit of um, abrasion to a 600. I'm just going to finish this with my own um, olive oil polish. I was um, thinking about giving it a, a shellac polish with some of the uh, friction polish I've got, but I don't think the snake was going to need it. You can really take it down to a, a beautiful shine by the time you get down to the 12,000 grit pads. And I don't think that shine would be improved by the uh, the use of the friction polish, especially since I don't really seem to be using it properly. It's not a finish that's making me smile at the moment. But learning curve, learning curve. I've ordered some Yorkshire grit, which is a polishing compound made of waxes and mineral oils and um, fine abrasive pieces to use on a box I'm making but if it had arrived today then I would probably most definitely give it a go but since I haven't got it I won't but my olive oil polish is just as good to give it a shine as anything else You know, if it's good enough to use olive oil for French polishing, it's good enough to use it for anything. I understand that, strangely enough, apparently you can also use it on food, which is most bizarre. Olive oil? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> if I could guarantee my wife was going to watch this video, I could also show you another use I found. For a 12 inch cake tin. But if she finds out I'm using it as a mould for some wood, she'll kick my fat ass. And we definitely won't tell her about the little glass bowl either that we're using for another mould. She will fucking divorce me in an instant. No, she wouldn't. I'm irresistible. How could anybody divorce this face? No? Huh? Huh? I'm an angel. Everyone will tell you. doesn't really help but I think it does and I'm tight so um, wankers clamp so we're almost there now just got a little clip there and a little tiniest bit there um, 
I can't see any scratches in it now. Um, obviously there are still some that I can't see. Well, I'm, I'm half blind, of course I can't see them. I'm not got the 2020 vision of an 18 year old. I had the double vision of an 18 year old, but that's drink. Oh, ho, ho. Mr. Booze. <laughs> The reason I've got onto another bit of 600, the amount of material that an 800 sheet bit of uh, sandpaper will take off is minimal. I think 600 is the last one where you're really taking off quite a bit when you're talking about fractions of mills anyway. And the precision of getting it just so. So once I've got that step out of the way on either end, I'll be ready to go up to a, a 800 grit, I think. We're almost out of 600 paper here. For our last little bits. I think I'm just going to get a little bit of 600, another sheet, just to do the ends, to get them down to where I want them to be. And then we'll get on to the 800. I think I probably came off the 200 a bit too soon, or well, the lack of the 300 makes it a bit slower.
one of the big problems, or one of the big fears I have is when I'm drilling out something that's three quarters of an inch square, and you're probably putting a, I don't know, it's got to be somewhere in a region of a 10, 12 mil tube down the middle. It doesn't really give you a lot of wood on either side, but then to order the one inch thick square, it, the price just goes up a little bit more. So you have to be brave. Have a floor standing drill, a vice that can hold the pen blanks specifically, and then a pen mill to straighten out the ends so that you know that your bushes are going onto a perfectly flat piece of wood. Otherwise, it's all the nines and tens and sixes and sevens. And you'll have a wonky pen. No, no, no use for a wonky pen. It's just bad planning. Unless you intended a wonky pen as first of all. I don't know. We're on the 800 set. Oh, that's a thousand. We don't want that one. Where did we put the 800? Where did the 800 go? It's not on its peg. It's not on its peg. Is now a slurp tea. Still a little bit of a break in the 800, obviously. You know. But it really doesn't take off that much material. It's really just a finer sandpaper, a finer finishing.
Right, so these pads start at 1500, which is this one. Just dancing along the barrel. You've got to keep it moving. If you let these pads get too hot with the friction, they melt onto the pen. And you've got to go back a couple of grades of sandpaper and start again trying to get rid of it. So just dance it along, keep it moving. You're not really trying to take much off here, all you're trying to do is just bring out the shine. You wasn't filming this in 3D, you've all shot yourselves. Da, 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 da. This, this is a 12,000 grit, this grey one. I mean, I've cooked on rougher pieces of silicon paper than this. It's absolutely silky, smooth. It just brings that shine out there. All right. Oh, that's good cloth. Pills yet. That'll wipe off with that. Um, and there you go. It's difficult to see the shine from there if we just bring it a bit closer. And there you go, you can see the shine on that. It's absolutely stunning with the beautiful skin snakeskin like grain on it and the next thing to do is to break out the olive oil polish so just a little bit of 
finger fault. And I'll just spread that on like that, obviously. And as it warms up to my, f my skin temperature, because I'm hot, I always tell my wife how hot I am. I'm Minstabus hottest wood turner. <laughs> it's not a very big area. We haven't even got super fast broadband, so it's nothing to boast about. Anyway, there we go. We'll just leave that polish on for a bit. Not long. Let it soak in. Maybe rub it in a bit more. And then we'll turn the machine on. And we polish. And this pen has turned from being a dull, unsanded piece of wood to a really deep, <coughs> rich, ready brown <coughs> with a shine on it that you could do your hair in. I would imagine, I wouldn't know about them yet. Turn the machine off. And there we go. Where are we? There, maybe if I got that white. No, something white. Something white. Not quite white, but... Uh, give you the contrast maybe a little bit better. On the colour of that piece of wood and the grain on it. Absolutely stunning. Worth every penny of the £10.40 I paid for the piece. The chef in me obviously goes, Oh, look at all that sawdust! How much sawdust! But then again, you can't get this far if you don't take all the excess wood off. Beautiful.